This is a behind-the-scenes look of a well-known computer hacking campaign. The hackers have a simple objective. They want to run malware or malicious software on as many computers as possible. The goal is to steal information. They want to collect passwords, access to websites with cookies or session data, cryptocurrency wallets, and credit card information. Anything that they can get on a victim. And those hackers, better called threat actors or adversaries or cyber criminals, will then sell this stolen information out on the dark web or across the black market so that they can make money. Money is always the motivator. This website is often called a panel, and it's really the dashboard for these cyber criminals to track their operations. This is the Raccoon Stealer panel. And the Raccoon Stealer is a very well-known and prolific malware strain that has wreaked havoc, collecting stolen information for years. Raccoon Stealer was first observed in 2019 and advertised as literally malware as a service. It's a cybercrime product. On this dashboard, cybercriminals can make payments or purchase continued access to the InfoStealer malware either in Bitcoin or Ethereum or just cryptocurrencies so that they can protect their anonymity. With this Raccoon Stealer panel, the users can see updates or new features of the malware, create new builds or their own copies, and manage their infrastructure with different proxies. And you gotta admit, the whole dashboard and panel is pretty sleek. It's a home base for operators, an HQ or headquarters, so they have a one-stop shop for all of their info stealer campaigns. It even has customer support and advertisements in place. The thing is, this fancy control panel is a new development and innovation from Raccoon Stealer. In late 2022, there was a short hiatus and a break in Raccoon Stealer's operations. They had to take a step back because in October 2022, one of their main operators, Mark Sokolovsky, who was responsible for their digital infrastructure, was arrested in the Netherlands. During that time, the Federal Bureau of Investigations was able to retrieve a ton of data taken by Raccoon Stealer. The FBI estimated that they found more than 50 million unique username and password combinations or other forms of identification, like email addresses, bank account details, credit card numbers, and so much more. With that, the Raccoon Stealer group paused their operations because they didn't want to get indicted. They were very popular amongst the cybercrime marketplaces because their malware as a service was so affordable, but they needed to play it safe and go quiet for a few months. But soon enough, they announced on the underground hacker forum XSS that after six months, they were back online. And they had new tools and new features. And this dashboard panel is one of their new innovations. They say that some of the new features allow users to quickly search for specific session cookies or passwords or even block unusual traffic that might come from bots or researchers. And of course, it has all these fancy graphs and analytics. If you ask me, it's pretty crazy. Now, of course, tons of threat actors and cybercrime marketplaces are selling access to Raccoon Stealer. They're all over the dark web or these shady telegram groups, and you can find loads of these malware as a service vendors either selling the capability and access to the panel itself or just the logs. These stealer logs are giant dumps of data that's been harvested and collected by these info stealers. So here I am using Flare.io to search out across the dark web and see just how common it is to see stolen information out and available. There are so many variants of different info stealers and telegram channels that sell them. But the benefit of Flare is that you can hunt down your own information exposure. Say you're a business and you need to know what your risk and threat level is. Like, do any of your employees or your teammates or your personnel have their emails and passwords compromised? Flare is the sponsor of this video, and I am super grateful for all their support. But seriously, if you want to configure and tailor your own specific dark web monitoring capabilities and track down cybercrime or stolen identifying information, check out Flare with the link below. Flare has incredible visibility. They literally import and track over 1 million new stealer logs every single month. Right now, they have a database of over like 43 million stealer logs. 
if you check it out and you sign up with Flare, there is a good chance you will find fresh Steeler logs with corporate access, and then you know how to better protect your environment. Now, at the end of the day, one info stealer is not all that different from any other info stealer. At least in terms of the malware or the functionality of the payload itself, they all just want to uncover the same data. So we got our hands on some real info stealer logs, not strictly raccoon stealer, but another very well-known malware strain, Redline. Now the Redline stealer has no reservations. They cast a wide net, sending the malware to just about anyone, even me, like I've gotten it and plenty of other, other content creators and public figures receive some scams or deception, phishing emails that might send them this info stealer. Now these info stealer logs that I'm showing you have been anonymized with fake names to protect the victims, but other than that, this is seriously real data. This is the genuine export and how stealer logs look. In this case, we'll take a look at the stealer logs for the poor innocent victim, Jeremy Miller. Check it out. The info stealer malware on this computer found a ton of user information, like their computer host name, their computer username, a public IP address, which could lead to an approximate location, and other computer details, like their operating system, screen size, time zone, hardware details, and other security mechanisms. It even tracks down the running antivirus protections, like Windows Defender, McAfee, and Sophos in this case. And the info stealer will list out all of the installed applications, programs, and software on that victim computer, and there's a special category for web browsers or internet browsing software. It'll rip out all the autofill data, like the information that gets saved whenever you tell your browser to remember this info. And that can have a lot of sensitive information, like your credit card details. Here's some data for Amex or American Express and their personal address. All the details that a person might use to quickly fill out forms to make an online purchase. And on top of that, it includes security question answers, like your mother's maiden name or your favorite food. And of course, this malware managed to track down social security numbers. And of course, all of this is redacted in this example. But if that wasn't scary enough, this is just the start. Remember, the info stealer can grab lots of session cookies, like the special account information to interact with certain websites after you've logged in. If an adversary has a person's cookie, they don't even need that victim password to log into the service. You can just present that cookie to the website like you're handing them a new name tag. Here are some records for LinkedIn, Bank of America, even UPS or Microsoft and Microsoft Office. If a hacker had access to a corporate Microsoft 365 environment, that could be the start of potentially a very bad security incident for a whole business and company. The Steeler logs will also list out all the running processes or the programs on the computer. And this could lead to other sensitive access, like even a Discord token. Poor Jeremy, if he paid for Discord Nitro, all those payment details could also be ripe for the taking. But of course, maybe the most attractive thing for the hackers are all of the uncovered passwords. This could lead to so much damage for both Jeremy's professional and personal life. Look at this, here are the records found to log into Okta or GitHub or HubSpot and even Google. Google on its own could end up with access to so many other services or web-based applications. For a business, that could open the door to wreak havoc. But there are some personal entries in here too, like even television streaming services. You can see Netflix, Disney+, Plus, a Twitch login, even Facebook. Looks like Jeremy was also looking for some Grand Theft Auto 5 video game mods. Obviously, he was a man of culture. Oh, wait, Roblox is in here too. Never mind. Now, if this wasn't already crazy enough, between a raccoon stealer, personalized dashboard and control panel with advertisements to other cybercrime tools, it is absolutely wild to me that they even still include some referrals within the stealer logs. There's a folder called FB Fast Check, which I assume is for Facebook, and there's a text file in here with details on how to buy FB Fast Check. 
Apparently it's only $200 and it includes the seller's Telegram username and the channel to reach out to make a purchase. It's all business advertising. Cybercrime is truly an underground industry and enterprise. So all that was poor, innocent, supposed victim Jeremy and the data and detail found in those info stealer logs. And whether or not it's Raccoon Stealer, or the Redline Stealer, or Vidar Stealer, or Jupiter Info Stealer, there are so many out there, that data just gets passed around the corners and crevices of the internet and the dark web. With that, I hope you're a little more educated on just how easily this information can get out there and obtained. And I hope you're a little more careful with what data and information you put into your computer, and especially what you tell it to remember. If this is a concern for you or your business, I really honestly recommend you try Flare. You can find some crazy stuff that is out there, but ultimately you can find and fix it so hackers, threat actors, and adversaries don't have the information advantage. Link below if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.